Mic check, and uh, yeah, we're live. What up? Awesome, dude. <laughs> well, I guess we're not live. I mean, we're... I know. I know what you mean. So, yeah, you're, uh, your signal's coming in pretty good. Okay. Ish. I-, I think... I really think it's just the tone of my voice. It's pretty low. Yeah. But, like, the, the waveform, if you can see the waveform I got, yeah. like, mine's all... And yours is like... Me, me, me. Okay, what up? Hello, everybody out there. Thank you for tuning in here, uh, stopping by. Say hi to us. Uh, this is This Evening Tonight. I am your host, River Sullivan, and I'm joined now by my hetero life mate and partner in crime here, my friend, Martin. What's up, man? How you doing? All right. Hey, this is, uh, yeah, this is a show here where we're just going to talk about a little bit of anything and everything and uh, probably not have or try not to have some of that hate in there thrown out. So, this week, or today, I guess, we are going to be talking about Death Stranding, which is a uh, game for those of you that have been living under a rock, which was uh, created by, uh, was it Kojima Studios? Uh, Kojima Productions, Kojima believe, Productions, yes. yes. Looking at the cast of it here, we have, uh, you know, the large names of it, Hideo, oh, Hideo I'm sorry, Hideo Kojima. <laughs> Daddy uh, Hideo. Daddy Hideo, yes. <laughs> Norman Reedus, Mads Mikkelsen, Lindsay Wagner, Troy Baker of The Last of Us fame, Margaret Qualey, Nicholas Winden Reffin, Emily O'Brien, Tommy Earl Jenkins, and Stephanie Justin. There's that uh, Del Toro guy. Uh, Guillermo Del Toro. Uh, he's a filmmaker. Normally okay. a filmmaker. Uh, like a horror. He uh, he made uh, Pan's Labyrinth. Okay. Yeah. it was. He's, he's awesome when it comes to horror. He was actually uh, working on PT with uh, Kojima before they... Now, there's there's a big theory that a lot of people think that this is, uh, like, PT itself. Like, this is Silent Hills. I, I can see it. Space edition. I can see it uh, being a spiritual successor of that. Because if you think about it, they they actually tried. I don't know if you ever played PT or not. Oh, fuck uh, yeah. It was amazing. I still have yeah, it on my used to, Yeah, you used to have it on your PlayStation, which yeah. is, I don't know how much resale value that adds to it. Well, I think it's a couple... I've seen it for like a thousand bucks on eBay, so I don't know. But don't you have to give out your, uh, like your sign in and everything because it's registered? No, because it's it's linked to the actual unit, like physical, like the oh, hardware. Okay. So if if they buy it from you, you need to sell the actual PlayStation. Okay, not your account. Nice. Yeah. Mm, yeah, so we're sitting here just looking at a little bit of gameplay footage of it right now here through the old uh, good old-fashioned YouTubes. Uh, so, you know, there's like a function I saw in uh, some of the footage. Like, he has to take a piss. I, I saw that. I never uh, – <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen that in any games. Uh, but it looks interesting. Like, they they didn't just did it as a gimmick. Uh, it looks like you have to – I mean, you have to actually do it. But it, you have to find a place where it's like private – and uh, people can't see because I guess you'd be vulnerable while you're taking a piss <laughs> in the game. But I'm just trying to figure out if you let it go too long, if he pisses himself, there's going to be like a negative effect. I, I don't know. Maybe people are able to track you. Like, Minus the, 10 stamina. I know. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> they, have, they have like a new bar which says like, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I wonder how... Uh, actually open this game is going to be like mm. open world i don't know if um i mean from what i saw of it like it was massive open and like the the footage i'd seen earlier was like he was like it was just like a mountain that he had to climb up and he had like this deployable ladder thing that you had to there was like a uh, like a build mode yeah and actually had to like lay it down and adjust it and then it would just plop down and just extend hmm and then, like uh, the the baby, the, the the BB that he carries on his chest, in the footage I saw, he falls off of, off a cliff, and I'm, I guess they were doing it on purpose to show it off. Yeah, like well, he fell off the cliff and then hit the BB or the the baby, and it started crying, and he was like, "Oh shit, you know, just my luck." So there actually was a mechanic; he detached it, and you had to. Like you had to like or... rock it and soothe it. Oh like there's God. like <laughs> it's a baby soothing simulator, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> he he always uh Hideo Kojima always tries to go over the top when it comes to gimmicks like that. So what's your favorite function of this right now? Of what we're looking at? Like right what now? well, I mean, even between what we're looking at and uh like what you like what you're hoping that it something you've seen, you know? Um, I think the uh, actual carrying stuff mechanic will be. Uh, I'm I'm very interested in that because right now he's he's trying to walk across a river, 
And you see like the red zone coming in probably. It yeah, probably indicated, I'm, uh, I'm indicative guessing, of de- uh, depth. Yeah, I'm guessing if, if you cross that, then you, you're going to go under the water and probably lose some stuff. But I'm I'm, I'm very curious to see. Yeah, right what, there. Hit yeah, the red. He's, yeah. he's gone. <laughs> Hit the red, lost some shit. Yeah, you can see his stuff floating. I, I mean, I'm sure you can retrieve it, but I, I want to see more about this uh, system that they have. Because if you think about it, what what is he transporting? I don't know if we know yet or not, but what, what is he actually carrying on his back? Is it? I know it's some kind of cargo, but... From what I saw, it was, he's going to be carrying cargo to, it's it looks like Fetch Quest, the sandbox adventure from right. what I saw. Um, he's got to take cargo of pretty much point A to point B, and point B is like all these little settlements. And like there was a, the ones I'd seen had like underground bunkers and stuff like that. I got you. Oh, yeah, then he wears out. Yeah, there's a catch your breath button. That's... <laughs> oh, Christ. I got to do that in real life, just walking up the stairs. Yeah. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah, that looks that looks pretty awesome, too. Oh, there's, there's the baby. Mm-hmm. Just checking him out. Make sure he's he's all right. All good. I, uh, I'm also wondering about the AI on this game. Like, are they going to be, like, tracking you down? Well, see, that's, it, yeah, like, who, though? It's like, is it NPC? Like, you mean, like, the NPC, like, the ghosts or whatever? That's uh, Well, um... That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> and um, it's... I'm, uh, I'm, I'm wondering about not just the ghosts, because, you know, they're going to be weird, obviously, but mm-hmm. the human NPCs. I wonder if... Because, I mean, it's like every game, they start hunting you down for a little bit, and once you leave the area, they just mm-hmm. don't care anymore, you know what I mean? Yeah. I wonder if these guys are actually going to be tracking you down. That get, that way, to me, it'll give me a sense of, like, I need to get to this location with my cargo as fast as possible. So, you're, you're talking like, uh, did you ever play Outlast? Yes. So, it was like that whole monster in the closet or, you know, monster in the house kind of thing like that. Yeah, you know, the pig nose dude, he was constantly looking yeah, for you. Yeah. And if you gave him any kind of hint, like he was going to come exactly. after you. But open world. Yeah, that know, would terrify game. the shit out of me because I like <laughs> um, open world games for me. I like the ability to go around and just right. you know, screw around. Like right. I personally, I hope they don't have something like that because I would be worried. Well, not even worried. Like it would detract from me trying to take in the scenery and, and, and screw right. off and do, I, I'm and do sure, other shit. I'm sure uh, – I'm sure it's going to come up in, like, maybe a few missions or something where you're going to be cha- chased by some well, enemies. Like, yeah, what, you know, Kojima, MGS5, where right. you had, uh, was it the Skulls? Uh, yes. There's, like, weird so. semi-undead guys that, uh, like, I, you know, I, once I, you're in their area, you run, hide, or die I kind of shit. terrified every time they popped up. Still to this day, that's, like, the hardest fight that I remember was at the airfield or whatever. And you yeah. had, like, I, I probably played that, like, 26, you know, to 30 times. And every time, like we'll try it with like the the, the Walker gear or whatever, and yeah. nothing. I don't even. I to be honest, I don't even remember how I got out of that. And there, there's so many ways that you can actually beat a level. Well, I mean, I don't even want to call it a level, but an enemy. You can just you can sneak past by them, or you can just kill them. But there's mm-hmm. so many ways you could do that, and it's it's just seeing gameplay of that game to this day. It's still impressive and i still see stuff like whoa i didn't know you could do that <laughs> uh joff killy is in this game who's that not that's, familiar that's the organizer of um the game awards oh okay yeah well what a better way to get a game award than to put somebody in that uh, uh, helps know. organize it no that's that's a nice cameo he's got so we're uh, about yeah we're over 10 minutes into this so let's take time uh, out of here to talk about our sponsor which we don't have one anyway so okay moving on <laughs> <laughs> Dollar Shave Club or whoever, if you're hearing this, please, please, please send us some, some stuff. Because uh, I need, I need to shave. Yeah, like we have luxurious beards, manly, <laughs> manly beards. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit! Dude, I, I was thinking about something weird today. Um, so what if AI were self-aware? Like if you're playing a video game, right, and you go and talk to an NPC, mm-hmm. and they are completely self-aware, but they cannot act. Or say anything other than what they're programmed to do. So you're but just they, like talking about Westworld right now. I, I guess. You ever seen Westworld? I've never seen Westworld. It was like Disneyland and they had, uh, but it was like the Wild West theme. Okay. I'm not going to do any, too many spoilers because some people still haven't watched the show. It's an amazing show. You can only watch it. It's like the HBO Go app okay. or whatever. That's probably why I've never seen it. Um, pretty much it's like you get to participate and be in the old West, but they're okay. all like Android robots and stuff like that. And they're all self-aware, but they're all programmed 
to do to do their role or whatever task. whatever role that they're programmed to do. Like okay. they have each one of them has a backstory oh, that's man. that's written by the programmers. That's horrible. Yeah, and like, but it goes on though as to like some of them they they start becoming self aware, like it's a virus or whatever. Okay, and you know shit starts going down right. and. Yeah, like hmm. kind of like that. Like that's that's what I'd worry about in a game. Like it becomes self aware. Like. Yeah, I mean, and what if like every time you get a glitch or a bug or they start going like a T post or whatever that that's them trying to overwrite their own uh, coding, but they can't. That re- oh, that reminds me. I got to give you a co- that copy of uh, Detroit. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Oh that yeah, like right there. Yeah, because like it's like it's like Neon Genesis. Uh, you know, breaking the AT field yeah. levels where like. She's trying to break from her programming or, or like one of the three, I think, androids that you get to play. Okay. Like at one point, you can ultimately break the programming okay. that they have. Okay. Yeah, but but um, it's, a, it's a very creepy feeling when I'm playing and mm-hmm. I think about that. Even though I probably, it's probably not. Well, um, yeah, like uh, I, we're talking about uh, Detroit Become Human, which was done by Quantic Dream. Uh, by what, what the hell is the guy's name? Uh Cage. Cage is his last name, but uh, he produced like Heavy Rain, and uh, then there was another one uh, before that that I can't think of off the top of my head. Oh, yeah, the uh, Beyond Two Souls. It had Willem Dafoe and uh, Ellen Page in it. Yeah, I've seen I've uh, never played that one, but yeah, I've seen it. So, like in Detroit, it's, it's pretty much everything you're talking about is like that AI that becomes self-aware because every time you play and save and log out and you restart the game, like you, or you, re, you, you uh, load it back up. Yeah the uh, AI interface will talk to you and like start asking you things and start questioning your choices that you've made in the game. Okay. Like kind of like, um, and it's scary how real this game looks <laughs> like it's at uncanny Valley. Like it yeah. bridges the gap Ugh. Uh, just a little bit. Um, oh, that, that me. reminds me of, um, animal crossing. I don't know if you ever played no, it. No. Dude, like you could be playing that little game, right. And having fun with it. And you stop playing it for, let's say a month or a couple weeks or whatever. And you come back to it. The game, there's going to be a character in the game waiting for you on the on the screen. And, I've heard about that. And she just goes like, oh, I'm glad you're back. Yeah. Wait, and then every single character that's in your little town, they'll be like, oh, who are you? I've never seen you here. And some people will even move in before you, because uh, the whole point in the game is you're the major of the t- of the town. And, mm-hmm. uh, the mayor of the town, sorry. And, and people uh, move in and you have to put ordinance uh you know what i mean like laws for the for your little town and yeah and put flowers and you know what i mean it's it's a but people will still move in even though if you're not playing the game so if you go back to it you'll see new uh people that are living there and you don't even know who they are so <laughs> but then they go like I, I don't know i don't i don't think we've met who are you and you'll tell them hey i'm I'm ruining this town. They they don't respect you because you're never there and it feels horrible oh damn so and how how old is that uh, Animal Crossing, I think it came out. It came out with, uh, I believe it came out with the 3DS. Um, so it's got some some age to it. Uh, yeah, but you can it it it, it hasn't uh, aged badly. No, it, it's it's a, it's still playable. I mean, it's just like Final Fantasy VII's been out for what over twenty years now, and it's still out there making yeah, people cry. I mean, even uh, <laughs> I was uh, speaking of aging well, I was looking at some footage the other day of uh, GTA V. Mm-hmm. And it still blows my mind. Oh, it still looks good. It, t- it still looks because I got it when it was on PS3, and then when it re-released onto next gen in yeah. quotes, like it still like it aged well, like yeah. it, it, it it kept up with all the next gen stuff. Absolutely, I felt whenever I bought it because I had it for the Xbox 360, and then they released the next gen uh, versions of it, and I got it for the PlayStation 4, and I felt like there was no upgrade. I mean, it's still because it still looked, and that's not talking shit about it but it, it looks so good that i was like it wasn't th- there was no up- upgrade needed mm-hmm. so it was it was a, a good it's still a good game yeah well you know it didn't age well fear um I, I played i think i played the first one yeah that's that's the first one where it was like you know the little girl yeah. and it's like a fps shooter yeah that was a release title i think it was yeah release title for playstation 3 it did not age well because, like, it was supposed to be the first generation of, like, true right. high fidelity, yeah. 1080p. And they took it at, like, 420 or 460 and just smeared it across oh, the 1080p no. spectrum. Like, it just, at the time, you're like, oh, man, it's, oh, I can't believe the graphics. But, like, yeah. <laughs> I went back and played it a while back and went, ooh, oh, God. Like, 
Figure Two actually aged pretty good. It was one of the first games that ever had me genuinely terrified. I uh, there was this game. I think uh, Condemned. I think it was called. Condemned. Whew, did you play Condemned Two Bloodshot? I, I think I think that's the one. That's the one that had the bear. You're in a I, cabin and you had to fight against this fucking bear. I just uh, I just remember there was a scene where you go through. It's, it's very blurry in my memory, but I think you go through like a, a pipe room or something. There's a bunch of babies and they're trying to get you. Or I think there's like a baby dolls or whatever. I don't know. That's God. That's almost common fare for most games. Now. I mean, yeah, but uh, it is really good game. Really good melee combat game. Look, Condemned 2 was terrifying because that was one game that like the set pieces in that were phenomenal. Like I want to say it was like the second level. You're in like this apartment building. Yeah. And. You look up, and it looked like just a grungy trash bag hanging from the ceiling. Walk under it like this skeletal, just everything rotting off of it, upside down, grabs a hold of you. I screamed <laughs> like I had never screamed in my life. Like <laughs> The people next door to me like came running over, knocking on the door, and like dude had his gun out because he thought I got shot. Like thought I was like getting attacked because wow. it was bad. It, it, uh, I'm looking at images right now from Condemned 2, and I, I don't think it has aged uh, badly. Mm-mm. It's 2008, and it, it doesn't, oh no no it doesn't that was a game that actually first game I I can ever think of in my recent memory that you actually had to you were you literally fought one of your demons which you actually fight your alcoholism in that game I don't Be- remember because you were aiming you'd aim your gun in that and he would be twitchy because he was a full blown alcoholic oh, after the first yes one. he'd have yes. to throw back like he would like chug a bottle of Jaeger <laughs> like yes. oh, there's some Jaeger right there throw it back I do just remember chug that. I do and remember that. you like it. If you kept uh, doing it, you it made the fight like almost impossible to win because you kept relying on the alcohol. Like if you just said <laughs> no, I'm not going to do it. When the fight came, then like you could actually kill him relatively easily, and then you wouldn't have the twitch anymore. Right, right. But like that, I thought that was an excellent mechanic. The, there's uh, an old cabin in that game where you fight a bear, and I have this unnatural fear of bears. Like, considering where I live at, like... Yeah, it's not good. Yeah. Like, bears terrify me <laughs> more than the giant spiders that live around here. But, oh, God, like... I'll never forget, I was playing with some buddies of mine. I was still in the military at the time. We were sitting in my house. And we're sitting there, and, like, you just see this massive, like, grizzly bear, and it's all foaming at the mouth and everything. And all the game said was, Run. And my buddy's he's like, oh, yeah, just run up the stairs. You can't possibly go up the stairs. I run up the stairs, turn around, see him knocking over banisters coming up the oh, stairs. I was like, terrifying. oh, Christ. I had nightmares from that. Terrifying. Um, I, I don't I, I don't play a lot of horror games, but there was one that I was, you know, and we were just talking about this game. Uh, I was terrified. I PT? PT. Yeah. That was the... PT was, was right there. Was that level where I said it condemned, made me scream, PT... Perfectly simulated that. I mean, it, never ever have I been scared from playing a video game. And as soon as I started playing this, I was like, okay, this is this is messing with my head. Because, and I'm sure everybody that's played the game has had this experience. When you're first doing the loop, mm-hmm. nothing's changing. You're going like, okay. And you get, you get used to that loop. And then at some point in the game, it changes. So you start; it becomes like a maze, and mm-hmm. so you, it take it. The game takes you from this familiar experience of being like, okay, I know, I come through this door, and then I have to go, you know, and hit the other door, and you know, the next thing will happen. Yeah, and no, it it completely changes it does, because yeah. you can't even find the other door at some point, and you don't even know what to do. To and they don't the tell game. you the controls or anything. Nothing. That's through trial and error. You figure what you click the right stick, and I think you could just kind of yes. squint. <laughs> and it's and it's it's such a good experience because you have to figure it out, and and it feels genuinely like a, a horror game. What and was the what was the lady's name? Like the scary lady? What, was it like Alice or something like that? I don't I don't know. I I, I still sometimes at night I wake up sweating. Uh, and heavy breathing because I could hear that radio and don't touch that dial now. I, <laughs> I said turn around. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> now, here's a little fun fact for you. The the scary lady in PT. Yes. She is always behind you. I, 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 I've seen that. From start yes. to finish. Yes. Like it took somebody like going in there and hacking it or whatever to, to leave the player uh, camera. Yeah, to actually. And you could see her with the with the, like the player animation, like, you know, the the two legs mm-hmm. or whatever in the arms. Oh, my but God. But no torso. But you see her. She's back there twitching right It's horrifying. You. 
horrifying. Um, but the uh, and I don't know if you know this or not, but she uh, she could hear the microphone. Like if you were playing I've heard, with a I've headset, heard that. and we try, I tried this uh, with one of my friends. We had a headset on, and we were like whispering to her or whatever, and. Uh, I think she just jumped at you or something. Yeah, you can like say was, hello to her. And... Yes, uh, you can actually talk to her and she will react to. I mean, not she's obviously not going to be like hello there. I'm here to hunt you, but you know what I mean. She will do stuff according to. Be like, nope. <laughs> yeah, I'll be like, please go away. I mean, there's there's a lot of games out there that that have been around here for a little bit um, that actually use like uh, an audience participation kind of thing with it too. Uh, one that I played uh, when I was still running. Like the old YouTube channel, the hell was it called? Uh, like Daylight. I was Daylight. playing it with my buddy Moose, and we were live streaming on Twitch. The audience, the people watching, could type in things into the chat that would trigger events in the game. Hmm. Like I never knew what was going. Like he would type. Like this one dude would type in footsteps, and then in the game here, like he'd hear these footsteps, like running up to him, like what is it? What? What? Wow. And you could like type in scream and there'd just be like this blood curdling scream at random. And I had no ideas. But when you're wearing headset, like it just blasted oh, you. Man. Um, one of the earliest like breaking the fourth wall interactions that I had with the game was probably Metal Gear. Uh, whenever you were fighting Mantis, you had to unplug. Oh, the, yeah. And, and then it would access, you? if you had your memory card in, it would access all the memory card. And be like, oh, I see you like playing Final Fantasy I, VII. I, You're I like, don't oh, have... oh, shit, oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, but but how are you supposed to know that you were supposed to unplug the mm -hmm. controller from... How, that's amazing. Yeah. And who figured it out? That's that's what I... I, mean, I guess he gave you subtle... I, like, I'm pretty sure there were subtle hints for it, it's right? It's been so long, but... Uh, I mean, when, when, but when you're playing a video game, you're not expecting that. Mm -hmm. Because that's something outside of the video game and world. And then they did that for uh, MGS4... For uh, was it Guns of the Patriots or whatever that one was called, where you actually fight Mantis again, but they were also showing off since Kojima had pretty much partnered with Sony and with Konami and all that. Yeah. Uh, when you had to fight Mantis again, he was like, "Oh, I will, you know, disconnect this," and it was like, "Why? Why can't I detect anything?" And it would flash that the controller's wireless. There's no wires, <laughs> and he can't touch it. That's and he's like, nightmare. "Where's your memory? There's no, no memory card." Like. <laughs> yeah. And he'd be like, he'd wave his hand and be like, place your controller on the floor. I'm like, okay, come on. Like, this is like an obvious for Yeah. Point. Like, he just like, he not he, he didn't break it. Like, he drove through it with a friggin' Mack truck. He was like, just, just place that controller on the ground. I'll move it across the room. And he triggled awesome. the, the rumble on it yeah, and everything. Yeah. That's awesome. Now, it, it's still awesome. Now, you want to talk about rumble and with, uh, since we're kind of on the train slash tangent of uh, progression of next generation systems. Yes. Did you see what the new uh, the DualShock Five, I guess, is going to have in it? I, I haven't seen it because I don't think there's anything out there. But I heard a lot of people have looked up the patents and everything and been oh able to figure God. it out. Now I, Sony I did get... confirm when it was coming out, which is holiday 2020. They did finally come out with that. That's that's I cannot wait. Um, haptic response controller. So so they're removing the rumble pack, like which is just the two spinning motors that are in there. The the uh... so it's like in your cell phone, like. Like with my Galaxy, like if I push the home button or whatever, like you get like that little vibration. It's so kind of like my phone. Like yeah, just it like have just, a button, yeah, but just, it feels like a button. Well, I mean, it's going to have buttons, but there's going to be that haptic uh, response feedback in, feedback in it. Like so, with your triggers, to <laughs> say if like they can, there's like resistance motor in there that okay. if you're pulling a trigger, like they want it to feel like you're going to have that click and oh, reset. Okay. Of an so they can gun. actually they can actually dictate how much pressure you mm -hmm. gonna have to. So apply. if you're doing a driving game, like you'll get the the, oh. the haptic feedback from. Like hitting the brakes, you you should be able to feel the brakes vibrating. Like you're actually like and you know, actually like, getting getting harder to push. Or mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that's awesome. Like you actually could kind of I guess simulate pumping brakes or okay. whatever. Yeah, I, I'm I'm I've been waiting for. Uh, I know the the Nintendo Switch. They did the the, uh, the HD Rumble. I don't mm -hmm. know if you ever experienced that or not. I think that's what it is. But it is amazing, and it, it it feels it feels real. Mm -hmm. I mean, it there's a, a mini game they have. Um, where you actually have to guess how many balls uh, are in the uh, controller, and you have to move it around. But it, there's nothing in there, obviously. Mm -hmm. But it feels like it, 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 they're rolling in there. And yeah, that's 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 what that is. I think they were the first ones really to bring it to the main market, okay. other than the phone industry. But yeah, God, getting super excited for that now. Yeah, I <laughs> now, like going back here to Death Stranding. Though I mean, God, like 
This is going to be one of the last titles that that might be worth a shit. Yeah, uh, well, I mean, there's, there's, I mean, we're we're talking a solid year left, so I'm not just going to straight up talk right. out of my ass, but I am going to a little bit. Uh, the Last of Us Two comes out in favor. Oh yeah, that's year. right. So, and when's Death Stranding releasing again? Is it... uh, November eighth, yes. two thousand nineteen. Mm. I might miss some work for that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> no, but um. It, 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 it does look like you know, I'm going to be invested in, in that game. Oh, yeah, yeah. We still got the footage rolling for this here, too. And are those buildings moving? Like, he's... He's on top of a, a oh, bunch no, of buildings right now. No, it's there's, buildings and it's like an ocean. That's... God, that's cool. There's like a flooding going on there. And there's a monster. I, 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 it's hard to describe this game because nobody really knows yeah. <laughs> what this game is about. <laughs> Until we play it, of course. And I, even that, I think after playing it, I'm going to be like, what just happened? Mm-hmm. Well, this is one thing, though, that I definitely respect about this level of game is there's not a lot out there. And, like, us now included are among the mass crowd of speculators and everybody that's yeah. trying to, like, we're just bouncing theories off everything and you know, ourselves and the Internet trying to figure out what the hell this game is truly about. And... <laughs> Because all, all we got is like this piecemeal from everybody from the internet and what little bit that Kojima is allowed out. Right. Which I I respect that, though. Because there's so many games now that come out and they're like, you, you look at them, you're like, oh, this this is just going to suck. Yeah, and, and, like, and you already know what they're going to be like by just looking at a trailer. Yeah. They, well, they I mean, give it's out also, too much. That's, that's the double-edged sword of it, too. Like, uh, was it that new Ghost Recon Wildlands uh, that, that just came out? Oh, uh, Breakpoint. Breakpoint. Yes. Okay, I saw that, and I'm a huge fan of the Wildlands franchise. Yes. Uh, I guess franchise now, considering there's two of them. Yeah. But in the first one, like, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. You could grind. You could find everything that, that you needed, every weapon, every cosmetic, stuff like that. And then they added, like, the actual, like, the Predator from the Schwarzenegger movie. Yes. Like, that, they put the Predator yes. in it. In, in like in like the jungle area, and it was mm-hmm. like a free DLC. They just kind of snuck it in there, yep. and there was like go here, and then you go here, and like the same music from the original movie started playing, like that weird drum is like, mm-hmm. I'm like, what? Oh my god, they nailed it! Oh my god, they nailed it! Like <laughs> me and my buddies went through, and we like we used all the period era weapons. It was like the M16 with a 203 grenade launcher, and like all BDU camouflage, yeah. nothing fancy, no drones, nothing. Like we like we tried Old to replay school. it just like they did in the movie. Old school. <laughs> And I can't remember who had to be Billy, the uh, the Indian dude with the knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the trees. Oh, man. <laughs> Watching and waiting and killing us all one by one. <laughs> so so someone played as the Predator, right? Mm-hmm. Like, on, so well, in, well, in the game? Yes. No, no. The, it, was, it was an AI. It was an NPC. Okay. okay. And that was a horribly hard fight for that mm-hmm. game. Like, I went in there with an APC, and he used that stupid little shoulder cannon. Done. Yeah. Like, you just instant... Cook, cooks you and your whole fire team. Oh, man. So, like, you had to have everything leveled up pretty good. Uh, like, I had, like, you could call in for rebel backup or whatever. I yeah. had, like, had it upgraded all the way. We had a platoon. I had, like, 20 dudes, like, 20 rebel fighters fully equipped. And then I called <laughs> in, like, four more as, like, distraction. Yeah. But I knew they would fight with me. And then I also had, like, the three guys from my squad plus me. And I was, like, we got our asses kicked. Like, all those, like, the rebels and stuff, like, all those NPCs, we used them as cannon fodder because you just see them running around you using thermals and night vision trying to find them. And ended up, we just start, all started rocking, like, 249 machine guns trying to get this asshole down because, and it was just like in the end of the movie, you get done and, you're like, you look at the body and he starts to want to, like, hitting the thing you know, oh, on his wrist. Up. And, like, the dude's just like, run! Bomb. Yeah, and we start taking off because, like, and you got to get, like, I'm talking at least 100 yards away because You'll if you bet. didn't, you just instant wipe. Wow. It was so good. But then you go into break point, which this is where I say the double-edged sword of people with these trailers. Like, this yeah. this right here for Death Stranding looks amazing. Yeah. And Kojima still has that reputation about him. All right. Absolutely. Now, you got Ubisoft that's produced just nothing but hot garbage now for almost the last decade. Man, it's it's been bad. I man. used to love seeing the Ubisoft logo. Like when I was playing Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter, get, I was like, excited. man, this is it's like get, this is Ubisoft game, man. It, psh, anything they make is golden. Quality. It's going to be yeah. a quality game. Well, now they've gone to quantity <sighs> because it's, just, it's all microtransactions now. Everything. Everything, uh, everything from any kind of upgrade for your weapon to 
skins, anything, you name it, vehicle, anything, you can buy it with actual money. Mm -hmm. And and it's not just that. Okay, I understand that things are going pretty bad with microtransactions right now in the gaming community, but just actually put out a game, worry about putting out a game that's worth playing Mm -hmm. first, and then... If you want to put all the money. My favorite with these microtransactions is what do they do now? They're like, hey, you know that game you just paid $60 for that you waited all you know months or maybe a year plus yeah. for? I mean, I know you really want to play it, but you, you just want to get to the end game and just be really good at it and just have all the good <laughs> shit. So give us some more money and we'll just take all that work that we used to call just playing the game. Yeah. We'll take all that out for you and just give you the, the, the free pass. Or what do they call it? Time savers or whatever. But the, Angry Joe did something on yeah, that with Breakpoint. When and, you get a chance, watch that. Watch his review on Breakpoint. I think I've seen it. Because they have like Billy Mays there and he's like, yeah, yeah, these I've seen, I've seen, I've seen uh, his Billy Mays skit. But um. Uh, it, it, there's a, a thing that baffles me. They, these companies are saying, "Hey, this is just a time saver, or more of like a, a, a it's only pre- player choice, right?" Well, here's the thing, though. You you made the game, and you're selling the convenience of playing the mm-hmm. game in a better way. So basically, you're creating a pro- a, pro- a problem for this uh, game in order for people to buy the solution. Yeah, yeah, paywalls. Well, pay absolutely. And that's just, it's not, it's not a good uh, business model for anyone. And I mean, they, it is if you're the business and you're just out there trying to make the money off of it. Well, absolutely. But there's some people that are just going to, you know, catch on the bullshit and they're not just going to buy. Like, I never, I'm not going to buy that game. And I know you're probably not going to buy that nah. game. And it's just, and it's because of that. Because I, I'm not going to support that. And that's the way I see it. It's mm-hmm. just. I mean, there's there's certain things like a lot of guys always talk about with like the microtransactions on here, and I and I, I believe it as well is it's it's okay for a microtransaction I believe to be in a game if it's just like a cosmetic detail like okay you want to buy this fancy hat or whatever for your avatar okay go nuts you know what you want to spend yeah. it spend a couple bucks on something go ahead but don't do like what Anthem and them did at Bioware oh my God. and yeah be like hey that skin yeah that skin's gonna be eight dollars and fifty cents yeah <laughs> <laughs> when when your game's not even complete mm-hmm. you're not even good. Um, uh, and speaking of this, I don't know uh, if you heard about this or not. It, I think it just came out today. Uh, Fallout 76. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I hate they, that uh, game. With <laughs> every fiber of my being. <laughs> well, uh, you love it even more now that uh, they just uh, made the game uh, an act- active subscription now. So now... Uh, <laughs> A hundred dollars for uh, uh, is it lifetime? Like, well, it's a year. You pay a hundred bucks a year for yeah. what? For the uh, for the subscri- subscription. It's kind of like uh, what? Uh, it's like a season pass or no, something. No, this is the actual game subscription. Uh, so I paid sixty dollars. I pre-ordered this game. Yes, for a gutted version of Fallout Four with zero NPCs and a bunch of hollow tapes and broken ass mechanics. Yes. So what are they doing that's going to make this um, worth $100 a year? Well, uh, here's uh, – if you go to Google, it'll say it. Bethesda has given Fallout 76 a premium monthly subscription with a bunch of new features locked behind it. It's called <laughs> Fallout First, and it costs either twelve ninety nine a month or $100 a year. What's included? Now, let's see what's included in this. Um <laughs> 500 I, atoms. I, I think. <laughs> <laughs> They'll give you an allowance of atoms. <laughs> they, they will actually give you an allowance oh of God. atoms a month. Uh, I, don't, I don't know exactly. Uh, okay, so you'll get private worlds. It says play in a private world. So you're paying $100 private world. That's private server. Yes. But <laughs> nobody else plays the game right now. Uh, exactly. But that's, that's I've already got get. a private server. <laughs> that's what you get, buddy. Uh, scrap box. Limited storage for crafting components in your own new scrap box container. I don't. <laughs> uh, here's the other one. Okay, yeah. A survival tent, a new placeable fast travel point with a stash, sleeping bag, and more for your basic needs. Basically, a, a feature that any game should have when you're going to have a. An so open also, world what game. they're saying then too is the. The system of building your little bases and stuff is so broken. We have to make it smaller into a tent. <laughs> yes. Because the servers are pretty much already shut down because of the lack of interest in a very broken game. Yes. Have they upgraded the graphics to the original promise of 16 times more detail? <laughs> I, I don't I don't think I don't think their angel engine can handle that. That's hey, that's yeah, well, that's what they promised. But that's, but, yeah. what, that's what they said. Um Adams receive 
1,650 atoms per month. Per month. Use, so 1,600, that's $16.50 is what, what the atoms broke down to. It was uh, like each, ad, each atom's about a dollar. Or every 100 atoms, I'm sorry. Every 100 atoms is a dollar. Because like for the people that ordered the, uh, like the, that, that, the big pre-order where you got like the power armor helmet and like they showed you getting this cool canvas, like yeah, yeah, eight, yeah. You know, a, mobility a bag, canvas. which they're on order cool, still for like nine months because they gave them like this, this, this nylon polyester like, <sighs> bag that I, you know, you wouldn't carry a loaf of bread in because it probably a... wouldn't make it. <laughs> That's another. Uh, but then they were like, "Oh well, sorry, because sorry for the bag. Here's 500 atoms." Yeah, you can even buy with the 500 atoms. You cannot even buy the canvas bag in game because it was more more atoms than 500 for you to buy it in game. So you can order the canvas bag in real life using in game. No, 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 no. So they gave those people 500 atoms, right? Yeah. In the game, there's an item, a skin. And it has the canvas ba- bag, but you can buy it with 500 atoms. You needed to pay more oh, money wow. to buy it. So it wasn't even enough to buy the digital one. Look, so Bethesda so, needs to make that. Uh, okay, yeah, continue. There's, <laughs> please tell me there's more. Okay, so, yeah, oh, yeah, there's more. Ranger armor outfit. I don't even have to describe that. That's uh, icons and emotes pack. This is all. So you get some some icon avatars and some emotes to play in a game that has probably 12 people in the whole planet still uh, playing. Th- I mean, look, as far as I know, there, there is a lot of people that still play it. I, who? I don't know. I, I And I'm being serious about this. I don't know anyone that still plays that game. I don't know anyone. Like, I, 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 I know own it. People. Like, I still own it. I still have my physical copy. But I'm sure you don't play it anymore. No, because I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do with it. Like, I was actually going to strap it to some Roman candles or something this last 4th of July, but I forgot. <laughs> Yeah, I don't uh, – why are they doing this? And they never – the whole thing, it, it's been horrible. They never actually apologize. Like, hey, guys, sorry, we we know we screwed up. We released a game that – Because they still had somewhat of the reputation that, you know, we're Bethesda and we got a lot of bugs and glitches, but, and it's endearing. <laughs> but it's – it's. I feel like their reputation has been not going very well lately, and it's because of this game. Now, I mean, and and the problem with this game is they start promising so many things, and people, I, you know, obviously they're gonna believe it because why would they lie? You know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. Bethesda, like Bethesda don't do that to us. <laughs> but now we know. But um, they they still <laughs> use the same engine. I'm sorry, just like <laughs> it's like because everyone's like Bethesda would do this to us. It's, yeah, it's just and like, I mean, there you go. Uh, we're it, like that kid, you know, it's like. But Bethesda, you promise it's been good game, Bethesda. And and it's it's they've been using that same engine for I don't even know how many games now. I think it's the same engine from Skyrim, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Bethesda, you a liar. Yeah, I mean, it, it, and it, look, even if you're using the same engine, you know, whatever. But sixteen times the detail. Come on now. So were they use they were they were using the same engine from four, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, it, look. Honestly, the game feels like just an acid flip from Fallout 4. Let's, let's be realistic here. It's a here. slight reskin, and it's a hollow version the, okay, of the so, better version of itself being Fallout 4. Now, look. Think about this. If if Fallout 76, all right, I think it would have been better for them if they were actually uh, – I felt that. If they were actually <laughs> – if they – okay, so let's say they are actually going to release Fallout 76, right? Mm-hmm. But let's say they do this – with a paid DLC for Fallout 4. Mm-hmm. So, like, an, as an expansion, like, oh, hey, Fallout 4 is, is going to have a multiplayer now. It's called Fallout 76 for, I don't know, 20 bucks. And it's like an add on or whatever for Look, Fallout if that, 4. If it was released as a free to play game and they're like, just buy, you know, use the Adams, buy shit for you know what? Yeah. I, I, I would because there's not I enough substance that. on the inside of the game. For I that. agree with it. And, and even it's still, like, okay, it would have been a little bit more justifiable why the game is so horrible. Or why the game released in this state? Because well, it's a free to play game, you know. Mm-hmm. You can understand that. But when I, you're charging, I, I that. Yeah. You, when you're charging sixty dollars minimum, charging full release price for a absolutely. not full release title, absolutely, and, and it, it, that's just horrible. And then when, whenever you there's people that pre order this collector's edition, and you're promising a canvas bag, 
give the people a canvas back. Come on. I mean, they, 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 what, what are you thinking of this? Like, you think, <laughs> do you, you, do you think that people are going to look at that nylon bag and they're going to be like, Meh. Oh, it's nylon bag. No, not, yeah, yes. not when you pay. I put all my knickknacks in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, and then the, the actual statement was uh, that it, it was a, a we, they couldn't get a hold of the materials for the nylon we, bag to 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 the multi billion dollar that that the right, but couldn't source some canvas. It's not, and it's not like uh, I'm sorry, canvas. Yeah, but it's not like they they weren't able to. Buy it, you know. They, it's, we're talking about Bethesda here. They have money, mm -hmm. but and and also, it's not like canvas is like a scarce material. You know, you have to dig underground to get it. No, all it, the all the hipsters are probably taking it. I, well, you're right, <laughs> but it, it it was just baffling. And then I don't know if you heard about the whole uh, the the uh, rum, the bottle. Oh yeah, the the nuka nuka black. Yes, or whatever. The, the yeah, nuka, nuka rum, and, and it was it was like rot gut. And it was supposed to be in this like beautifully crafted oh glass, God. like hand blown glass Matt. rocket ship. Yep. Uh, like the Nuka Cola bottles, but all they got was like a black plastic. And it took forever to get there. Like it, at first, I, they had a set date, and people were they didn't even know where. Okay, so where's my package? Right. Uh, a couple of weeks later, they got an email saying, "Hey, you know, sorry, it's been delayed. Here's a good a video of what we're doing in good faith. You know, showing our good faith." And it was just a, a, a promotional video, but then it caught the the eye of some uh, viewers that, "Wait a minute, this looks like plastic. What are you doing?" And it was actually a it, bottle, and it was like, and it, it was like snapped and glued in, it, encased in a plastic, <laughs> cheap plastic, with a sticker on it. That it could be easily ripped. So people noticed that and they were like, whoa, what are you doing? And when the whole thing came out, it was just, it wasn't even good rum. <laughs> yeah, everybody was doing taste tests of it. They were like, oh, I wouldn't put this in my car. <laughs> I mean, uh, I don't know what, what Bethesda is doing, honestly. I, I mean, there's, there's there's companies out there, though, that made it right. I mean, and I don't know why, for them, as large of a company as they are, that they haven't done it yet. I, I, I mean, it, was it No Man's Sky? I got that. I mean, I pre-ordered that, downloaded it, got, you know, release day. And, you know, we all called it No Man's Lie because after about an hour or two, you were like, well, this this is it. Yeah. And then you get to the center of the universe and they even joked about it. Oh, well, yeah, we wouldn't do anything stupid. Like, we wouldn't you know, just, do that. We wouldn't start you over. And you get to the end of the universe, credits roll, zooms you back out, you restart clear at the edge of the galaxy and like go, go at it again. And there were people that played that game and went to the center of the universe like 11 times. Just to see if there Just was something different. Just to see. Different. And after like time 11, he's like, I quit. I'm done. But I, look, I hear that game uh, it's, it's better now. I, I don't know. Yeah. Like I, I played it. That's what I mean. They made it right. Like there was a big 2.0 upgrade and it was like they, they every, every space station is like a social hub now. Okay. And you see players okay. actively. Like you can like you, you can claim your own planet, start your own colony there, and build it from the ground up. Like it's like a beautiful Minecraft now. Okay, because that that was one of the main problems when it came out. Like it was almost impossible to see anyone. Mm -hmm. You felt by your, like you were by yourself, and and, and, and that was they, the mystique of it. They were like, you'll just kind of randomly see right, people and, and, and there is just, some kind yeah. of magic to it, to where you're playing this. Oh, look, someone, and then you interact with that person or whatever. You know, it's another player, but. There were some people that played it and never encountered no mm -hmm. one, and it, it just, you just yeah. When feel... I played the first iteration of it, I never encountered, like never, never met anyone. <laughs> and they were like, "Oh, the rich storyline of all these other people," and no, nah, no, nah, I didn't, no. didn't see that. But the the difference and I, that I feel uh, with uh, that there is with uh, Fallout seventy six and uh, No Man's Sky is that the people in No Man's Sky they actually. They, they they made it right. They they acknowledge like, look, guys, we screwed <laughs> up. We're gonna make it better for you. And this is all free updates that they've been releasing for this game. They're just making it better. With Fallout 70, 76, it's just I, I still cannot comprehend why are they doing this. And this <laughs> is a a beloved company. You know, like uh, I used when to buy, people were calling them out on it, it was like, how dare you? Yeah, <laughs> how, how could you do this? We we gave you our money, and you this is what you do, and. and you know, now I'm at the point where I just I, I don't want to buy anything that's Bethesda. Honestly, I, mm -hmm. it's Sadness. frustrating. It's frustrating. <laughs> honestly, same with uh, I've been feeling about uh, that way with um, uh, Blizzard and Activision lately. 
with the whole Hong Kong oh, deal. Oh, yeah, God. I don't... I, I don't... That was that was horrible. I don't know what they're thinking. They, were, they weren't thinking. It's, it's damage control. That's all damage control right now because when, when you're a multi-billion dollar company, probably like Blizzard and Activision, right. you, you have to go with what's in the best interest of your assets. But but you got to think, like, uh, yes. It, but they're it, not, yeah, they weren't thinking of the assets no. <laughs> as, as being their, their fans, it, their consumer base, the people that, that are the reason they have yeah. all the money was because of, like, regular guys like you and me that go out and buy their shit. It, it's, it's, a, it's a problem they created. If they would have just be quiet about it, mm-hmm. but they had to su- suspend that guy for mm. And now they uh, they, well, they fired it, the two the the two casters. Yeah, I don't I don't understand that. They they even like you know they were hiding their faces from the camera because they knew oh you know crap a shitstorm is coming. Yeah. And even even they they just got fired. But uh, he got um, a year suspension and they reduced it to a whopping six months. Yeah, but they also won ten grand and they rescinded it. Yeah, it, it's horrible. I mean, let him express himself. I mean, I I don't know to be honest. Like, I've never really played too many Blizzard's titles myself. So, I, uh, like I, the last one I think I played was Diablo three. I I, uh, I mean Overwatch, Overwatch. That's probably what, yeah. I, what I play the most. But isn't uh, Overwatch like a MOBA? No, Over, Overwatch is a um, a, a hero shooter. Oh, okay. They, it's they, like they that arena much, style. Uh, yeah, you could say th- there's different modes. Yeah, but okay. you can say that it, it, it's a it's a a hero shooter you know you have like i don't even know 30 some heroes i think there is oh, okay 20 some i'm not sure i had a bunch of guys say that like like for me to boost like the old channel was like you need to start doing mobas and arena shooters there's a you lot know, of people that need to play some hearthstone i'm like oh, this it, it doesn't look interesting to me yeah it, it it's not for me either but but this overwatch it, it's it's more like a shooter game mm. it's more shooter than anything else now still staying on the subject of people that made it right is uh rockstar I mean, uh, Red Dead Two Online. Have uh, you checked that out yet? I, I did when it first started, and I and it just it was it was like a Fallout seventy six. You're like, oh, this is cool, except it, yeah. other players can just actively kill the shit out of you. Yeah, because I'd be there fishing, and then he's like, like just an arrow right to the head, and be like, dude, I'm fishing. What you gonna do about it, man? What you gonna do? I'm like, yeah, well, I can't know. do anything. There's no private servers, but uh, they actually uh, changed it. Uh, everybody's saying, like, I saw the commercials and everything. Guys were like, you need to get back on there. So I went back on there. There's jobs. Jobs. I got a job. I got, I'm got. i a trader. Okay. <laughs> you can be a trader, a uh, treasure hunter, which I want to try next, which is like, they call it the adventurer, where you go and you're going on these adventures. I, I don't I like, I, the way they sold it um, was like, you're like Nathan Drake, like kind of, kind of level. And then there's like a bounty hunter. And I think that's it. But I started with Trader because I was like, I want to earn some some coin. So you got to like go out and, you know, harvest things. Like I'm walking around with just like my little hat and vest on and like just, just picking berries and killing animals and skinning them and, uh, and going fishing. And then you bring it back to the camp, put it in your business, and then it creates like product, which is these barrels. And it lets you know like this is enough to produce this much. And then at the end of it, like right now I think the last production I had was like $61.50, which for the Old West money is actually really good. But I can get, from what I understand, I can get other players on there and, like, we can have, like, our own trading company. Like, you know, like, you jump onto my server and then we go out hunting together or fishing or whatever and we take all of it back and then we can split the cash, like, when we uh, haul the shipment. Okay. So, like, you get on the carriage and you got to haul the shipment to, like, Valentine or something like that. And, uh, yeah, once you get it there, like, it, I haven't done a shipment yet. I'm still trying to fill up the, the coffer or whatever, or the carriage. Right, right. And it was, like a fourth of the way there and it was like sixty one dollars and fifty cents. What was that? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I wonder if they're gonna do and I hope they do a uh, what was that called? The undead. Uh, you remember that? Oh well have you uh been hearing some of the stuff that's been going on I, in Red Dead Online? No, I have not. Players have been actively reporting that while playing it, they hear zombies. <laughs> Like they hear like the yeah, yeah, yeah. like they hear be, that be and they've awesome. been finding zombies. You know, like they found dead bodies with like the green greenish kind of skin, and the eyes glassed over, and they're like, "That's that's a zombie." Now, was that online or? I'm told that's online, but we'll see. I mean, if they put that, 
Like I, I, I could be completely wrong, but I mean, it might just be single player. But I yeah, believe from what I saw, it was I'm, I'm looking. It was it, online, yeah. from what I, I remember. Can, I can see why people. If well, that happens online, I will be so happy. Uh, can you? Okay, so I would love if they would just go and do it and not tell anyone. Just, just that, that's, literally. That's what I'm leaning towards too. That's what I think. They're literally, doing. just you're playing, and then let's say you're playing a match, and out of nowhere, just they just start coming. Mm-hmm. And it's just whoa, and the whole game turns into you know because that 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 would be the best looking zombie survival game I would like most of us have ever seen. Absolutely, a western something yeah. you know, you don't really have a mm-hmm. western zombie uh, zombies. I mean, but then they'd game. have to do like some kind of mechanic where you could like barricade a door or I'm, you know, I'm sure. or, I mean, it's or something. I'm yeah, sure they, I mean they they, they but, have the technology. Yeah, but I'm, I'm I'm I don't think I'm gonna play it until it comes out on PC, which will be soon. It's like next week, I think. I believe, yes. Which I'm super excited for because, like, the Neves gaming guys I follow, they uh, they've been talking about it on their podcast, and like, they did a cinematic series for Grand Theft Auto Five. One yeah. of the guys there loves using like they're, they're he's really good at using that Rockstar editor, and uh, like they did like a cinematic series of just like like a semi online let's you know like an LP right. of GTA Five, and they want to do it for the old West. Okay. And they haven't been able to really touch it till it comes to PC and hopefully get the Rockstar editor rolling because you can pull off some beautiful cinematography in that program. I don't know how to use it, but I've seen how people use it. <laughs> like that Matty Plays HD guy, like yep. he used the Rockstar editor for this and like actually did some pretty cinema quality things with the camera angles and the music and stuff like that. I was I was pretty happy with it. Okay. Well, successful podcast, I call it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have. Take First, uh, it was the maiden voyage here. Uh, we did some talking. Uh, we uh, were originally just going to talk about Death Stranding, but... Uh, Got out of hand. Nice. But, uh, all right, guys, uh, that's enough from us for now. We'll see you guys here next week. Uh, thanks again for coming in, uh, tuning in, and saying hi. So until then, peace out.